All right. Well, good afternoon. Good evening. Maybe good morning if you're on the other side of the dateline. My name is Nate Shoot. I will be your MC here for the rest of today. Some of you may have suffered through some time with me earlier this morning when I was talking about spring for architecture, but all I'm here to do now is be the intro outro type person. So I am delighted to be back in the seat. Thank you, Ryan, for doing that for us this morning. And so we're going to kick off here with a, a talk that I'm pretty excited about. You know, I'm part of that, that wonderful committee that gets to pick through all these it's an incredibly tough job. I'll be honest with you. It's hard. There's a lot of great talks that we have to say no to, but I'm very excited to have Timo here to talk about serverless and everything that goes along with that inside Spring, including a little Brawl VM. Very excited about that. So without further ado, Timo, take it away. So hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to my talk about going serverless using the Spring framework ecosystem here at Spring One. So what's on the agenda for today? So first of all, I will briefly introduce myself. Then I will talk about what serverless is and the benefits of serverless for you and your application. And finally, I will show you how to go serverless with Spring applications uh, by using CrawlVM native images and Spring native. Feel free to ask questions in the Slack channel for the session or uh, the Q&A Zoom chat after that session. My name is Timo Saam, and I'm based out of Stuttgart in the southwest of Germany. I started to work for Pivotal as a platform architect, and as a consequence of the Pivotal acquisition, I'm now in the role of a senior specialist solution engineer for the VMware Tensor portfolio. In this role, I'm responsible for educating my customers on the VMware Tensor value, vision, and strategy, and ensure that uh, they succeed by working closely on different levels of abstractions of modern applications and modern infrastructure. Before I joined Pivotal, I worked for more than seven years for consulting firms in the, in the automotive industry as a software architect and full stack developer in projects for customer facing products. For a common understanding, let's now take a look at what serverless is. Serverless doesn't mean that there are no servers. It means uh, that uh, you don't have to care about them. And uh, serverless techniques and technologies can be grouped into two areas. The first one is the backend as a service with the goal of replacing server-side self-managed components with off-the-shelf services. This frees you from writing entire logical components, components and requires you to integrate your applications with a specific interface a vendor provides. Example for backend as, back as a service offerings are, for example, cloud accessible databases like Parse or Firebase, and authentication services like Okta or Auth0. The second group is function as a service. That's a new way of building and deploying server-side software oriented around uh, deploying individual functions. And uh, function as a service drives a very different type of, uh, type of application architecture through a fundamentally event-driven model, a much more granular form of deployment and the need to persist state outside of a function as a service uh, component. By using these ideas and related ones like single page applications, such architectures combined with the backend as a service to remove much of the need for a traditional always on server component. One of the most popular implementations of function as a service platform at present is AWS Lambda. The key is that with both, backend as a service and function as a service, you don't have to manage or uh, own um, server hosts or uh, server processes and can focus on business value. The key characteristics of serverless are that first, there is no long-lived server process or server host that you need to manage. Serverless self auto scales dependent on load without any effort and is also auto provisioning when it performs auto scaling. It removes all the effort of allocating capacity, both in terms of number and size of underlying resources. For serverless services, you can typically expect that the vendor provides high availability for you. As an example, if you're using a backend as a service database, you can assume uh, that the provider is doing whatever is necessary to handle the failure of individual hosts or uh, yeah, internal components. And if you are using function as a service, you can expect that the function as a service provider will reroute requests to a new instance of your function if the underlying host or original instance becomes unavailable. 
However, you may need uh, you may need to handle uh, any upstream effects of an uh, HA failover. Most serverless platforms expose some performance configuration. For example, for AWS Lambda, you can specify the amount of memory for an environment. However, this configuration should be completely abstracted from whatever underlying instance or host types are being used. Finally, serverless costs are precisely correlated with the usage. So if your application is only running for five minutes, you uh, only have to pay for the five minutes. Now let's talk about the benefits of serverless for you and your application. The biggest advantage of serverless is that it removes so much of the complexity of building, deploying, and operating applications in production at scale, where the function as a the service, for example, packaging and deploying a function is very simple compared to deploying your application on Kubernetes or even an entire server. All you have to do is to package all your code into an archive and uploading it. Another benefit of serverless is that uh, scaling happens automatically with a no effort. Um, with uh, this capability, serverless reduces resource costs because you don't have to offer provisioning and um, have to over provision and uh, pay for the capacity necessary uh, to handle your peak expected load, even when, for example, your application isn't expecting that load. So for any application that has inconsistent load, you will see resource uh, cost savings by using serverless. With a backend as a service, you have less logic to, de to develop yourself and less operations work. And with function as a service, um, software development and the deployment is simplified because much of the infrastructure code is moved out to the platform and you just have to upload basic code units, which leads to uh, reduced labor costs. Finally, serverless also reduces risk since the number of different technologies you are responsible for directly operating is significantly reduced and the expected downtime for the components is reduced. Until now, serverless really sounds great, but there are also drawbacks and limitations. One of them is uh, that the cost model is based on precise usage and with a rapid auto scaling comes uh, the risk of unpredictable uh, costs because when big demand comes, it will be served and uh, you have to pay for it. Of course, for most of the offerings, uh, you can set boundaries for the scaling behavior and you can also perform load testing to predict costs. Another one is uh, that most serverless applications are stateless. And by definition, they have to interact with other stateful components to persist information which introduces uh, latency, as well as some complexity. Additionally, much of the intercomponent communication happens via HTTP APIs, which can be slower than other transports. And uh, the more components communicating, the more latency will be inherent in the serverless application. Serverless platforms can scale out to a lot of container instances very quickly. This can be uh, or can cause a trouble for downstream systems that cannot increase capacity as quickly as uh, um, the, your serverless workloads. And uh, that can lead to trouble, um, uh, for example, with uh, databases um, and um, other external API, APIs uh, that have a weight limit. An obvious limitation of serverless is a loss of absolute control over configuration, security, and for example, the performance of application code and performance of underlying serverless platform. Debugging and local testing is also more difficult and uh, vendor lock-in seems like another inherent uh, limitation of serverless applications. However, different serverless platform vendors enforce different levels of lock-in uh, through, for example, their choice of integration patterns and APIs. For the following demos, I use Knative as a serverless runtime. Knative is an open source community project which adds components for deploying, running, and managing applications on any Kubernetes in a serverless way. Unlike earlier serverless frameworks, Knative is designed to deploy any modern app workload from monolithic applications to microservices and functions. It consists of two primary components. Serving, which uh, provides middleware components that enable rapid uh, development, upgrading um, 
routing and uh, automatic scaling of containers and the eventing system for uh, consuming and producing events, which can be triggered by a variety of sources, such as events from your own apps or cloud service form. In the following demos, demos we will only use uh, Knative serving. As a side note, VMware Tenzu has a commercial Knative offering called Cloud Native Runtimes for VMware Tenzu, which I will use here. As a summary of this section, Serverless has some drawbacks um, and limitations, but the primary drivers for the, that, for the adoption are developer productivity, platform elasticity, and uh, cost savings. Um, especially for applications that have inconsistent load, going serverless makes a lot of sense. So uh, yeah, let's now find out how a typical Spring Boot application performs on a serverless runtime like Kubernetes, uh, Knative. Let's first have a look at the sample application, um, which I will deploy here. So it's a really basic example of an application. Um, it's only it's only using uh, uh, um, uh, a, a Spring a Spring Web here and has one REST endpoint that uh, just returns a, a Hello World message. So a really basic example. But um, yeah, what I want to show is, is, is really um, the, the um, problem, uh, problems or limitations um, with a, um, of Spring Boot currently with a serverless uh, um, uh, on a serverless runtime. Um, so for that application, I already created a container image. And um, later, I will show how I did that and, and um, also how long, for example, the build time was. But for now, um, should be enough if I just uh, deploy it here. And um, I'm here on a second. Sorry, this one. Yeah, so. Um, <laughs> So yeah, um, I'm here on a, on a cluster where um, I have access to Kubernetes. Uh, and um, on that Kubernetes cluster, uh, there is our Cloud Native Runtimes installed. So um, it's a open source uh, um, Knative with uh, some commercial parts like an easy installation. And what I will do now is uh, create a Knative service of um, my um, yeah, basic Spring Boot example. And um, for that, I already... Um, created a Kubernetes a secret. You can um, see here. Sorry. You can uh, see here that Knative is able to access my uh, container image at a private registry. And what I do now is um, create that uh, service, um, that Knative service via the KN uh, CLI. And the command for that is uh, KN service uh, create, service create um, spring boot hello world in this case. And um, I have to specify the container image I want to use. And uh, because of um, the fact that my container image is um, stored on my private registry, I also have to uh, add uh, the name of the secret I created here um, um, that uh, the container image can, can be pulled by Knative. If I ex execute that in several uh, yeah, seconds, hopefully my uh, service or my application is available, which is now the case. And as you can see, it's really a higher abstraction um, than on Kubernetes because the only thing I did is created one service here and now I have a URL I can call um, to uh, to uh, fetch, um, yeah, in this case, uh, the API endpoint. So well, let's do that, just fetch it. Um, and we see here's our response. So um, Knative really abstracts away a lot of uh, those uh, different objects you normally um, have to create, 
have to create for the same experience. So for example, deployment, services, ingress, uh, et cetera. And um, for sure, those, uh, those objects are still uh, running in my cluster. So if I do a K get pods, hopefully uh, it's still there. Um, uh, one instance of my application that's running. And um, what I can do now is um, I can uh, have a look at the container to see, for example, um, because we saw that uh, the startup time is important for serverless, that it's not too high. And um, here with our Spring Boot application, with, uh, without any optimizations for serverless, we can see that uh, we have um, a startup time uh, of uh, 2.3 uh, seconds. And um, the problem there is, um, for now, my application or my instance is running, and um, it's uh, available to serve traffic. But um, the, currently, it's configured for that service, um, a Knative, that um, it scales to zero. So um, maybe right now, um, there is, uh, um, uh, there, there is um, um, so, so currently one is running, but it will scale to zero. And with that, um, if a new request, um, uh, um, uh, if I will trigger a new request to my application, um, it, it takes two seconds until it can be served by my by, by my application or new instances will be uh, that will be created. And also, if for example there's a lot of load and a lot of containers have to be created or instances have to be created to serve that traffic, um, um, we have the problem at uh, yeah for several containers. And the problem is um, this really basic uh, application. Um, it only has a startup time of two seconds. If you have a bigger application, and as I mentioned, um, Knative is a, a, a serverless runtime for uh, monolithic uh, applications uh, too. Um, if they are modern and, st and stateless, and uh, with that, that really could be a problem that, for example, uh, your request runs into a timeout. So let's have a look again. As you can see, it's terminating. So currently, we have no instance anymore. And um, if we now do a curl, it uh, takes uh, yeah longer than um, the one before because um, uh, Knative first has to to create a new um, has to create a new uh, instance for that. And um, yeah, that's one of the problems of that uh, Spring Boot application. Let's now because um, yeah we have Knative. And uh, we want to have some fun. Let's now um, um, uh, uh, create a little bit more requests here with that load, uh, load uh, testing uh, tool called Hey. And um, if we now see, uh, if we have a look at the pods, um, we, we um, after some time, we should see that uh, yeah, a lot of pods will be created for the, uh, to, to serve uh, the number of requests I'm creating here. Okay, now it's two, it's more than one, uh, three. And as you can see, um, it really takes some time until the containers are ready because of the startup time. I think that's enough to show it is auto scaling. For sure, you can uh, also tweak with Knative uh, how um, um, or on, on which metrics or uh, thresholds uh, um, new containers will be created. But um, yeah, for the default, um, Configuration, yeah, I think that's okay to show you uh, that it works. What we want to do next, what's important, uh, as we saw in the previous slides uh, for our application uh, for uh, yeah serverless is um, and and uh, the cost of uh, resources is um, the resource consumption. So um, and because of the uh, scale to zero and um, the fact that I want to show you how much uh, resources uh, the application consumes if there is no load, um, I will update uh, the Knative service um, so that um, um, always one uh, always one instance is available. So the minimum number of instances now is uh, is one instead of zero and um, Let's wait for a second uh, um, that all the other uh, instances are killed because of uh, the fact that there is no no load mare, uh, anymore. Um, then we can have a look at um, 
at the um, uh, metrics and the, the consumption via the Kubernetes metric service. Okay, so um, let's do that now. And um, as you can see here, um, regarding the load, so our application is in the user container. The queue proxy is a component or container injected by Knative where the requests are going through. And um, the user container is our application. And you can see um, it's currently um, using 234 maybe byte. So that's, um, yeah, um, instead of uh, 1,000, uh, that's uh, 1,024. And um, yeah, it's a different um, unit here. Um, but yeah, it's around 260 megabyte, uh, I, I would say. So we see without any load, it's uh, using a lot of memory. And um, yeah, to reduce our costs and also CPU cores to reduce our, our costs, um, yeah, we should have a look how we are able to reduce them. So let's go back to our presentation. Um, as we saw, um, uh, in the demo, uh, um, the Spring Boot application really worked well uh, with the serverless runtime, but um, uh, yeah, we really have room for improvement um, for a better, better resource consumption and uh, we have for sure then to reduce costs. And um, now uh, we want to find out um, how we are uh, able to um, really uh, get the full potential out of serverless with our Spring Boot application. In traditional Java applications, Java code is compiled into a Java uh, bytecode and uh, packed into a jar archive. The Java virtual machine uh, then executes the Java program contained in the Java archive on the host platform with a bytecode interpreter. And um, the execution of Java bytecode by an interpreter is always lower than the execution of uh, the same program um, compiled into a native uh, uh, machine language. And um, this problem is mitigated by a just-in-time compiler. And a just-in-time compiler translates a Java bytecode into a native uh, machine language while executing the program for parts of a program that are frequently executed. And um, the translated parts of the program can then be executed much more faster. And uh, this way, a JIT compiler can significantly speed up the overall execution time. This uh, really sounds great, but uh, yeah, the downside is uh, that uh, the JIT compilation impacts the application startup time, which we saw, and uh, uh, Java program running on Java virtual machine is always more resource consuming um, than uh, native execution. With a ahead of time compilation of the Java code to a standalone executable called uh, um, native image, um, uh, you are able to mitigate these problems and make your application start faster and consume, uh, consume fewer uh, resources um, like we want to. The native image executable includes the application classes, classes from the dependencies, runtime library classes, and statically uh, linked native code from JDK. It does not run on the J, uh, uh, Java VM, but includes uh, necessary components like, um, for example, mem manage, uh, memory management or thread scheduler. Um, and um, so, uh, uh, yeah, other stuff from, from, from the runtime system. And uh, that part is called uh, the straight VM here. And um, the only way to do this at present is uh, to do a crowd VM, but in future, uh, Similar technology may be available, like for example, the OpenJDK project Leiden. CryVM is a high performance JDK distribution um, by Oracle, designed to execute applications written in Java and other JVM languages, while also providing runtimes for JavaScript, Ruby, Python, and a number of other popular languages, which is made possible by CryVM's uh, Truffle language implementation framework. 
Gravium adds an advanced just-in-time uh, optimization compiler, which is written in Java to the hotspot Java virtual machine. And um, with that, GraalVM offers uh, three runtime modes, the JVM runtime mode and the uh, native image runtime mode, which is really interesting for us. Um, and um, last but not least, the Java on Truffle for those non-JVM uh, languages. Native images are really able to improve both the startup time and the resource consumption for uh, your applications deployed on a serverless runtime. But you have to keep in mind that there are some trade offs compared to the JVM. And um, they offer lower throughput and higher latency because they can't optimize hot path during runtime as much as uh, the JVM can. The compilation takes, mu takes much longer and consumes more resources, which is bad for developer productivity. I will show that later. And finally, the platform is also less mature, but it involves and improves, improves very quickly. The native image plugin is available as an early adopter technology in GraalVM Enterprise and can be used in production, supported by uh, Oracle as a part of a paid uh, GraalVM Enterprise subscription. However, it is not uh, covered by the Oracle's uh, standard guarantee. Additionally, today, um, VMware Tanzu announced enterprise support for Spring Boot native applications compiled with a Bellsoft Liberica a native image kit, which is based on uh, GraalVM open source. The key difference between a regular JVM and this native image platform are that a static analysis of your application from the main entry point is performed at build time and the unused uh, parts will be removed. For reflection, resources, and uh, dynamic proxies, upfront configuration is required and the glass path uh, is fixed at build time. Glass lady loading, loading is not possible and there are some limitations around some aspects of uh, Java applications that are not fully supported. And finally, some of the code will run at build time. Let's now have a look at how you can start with Gravi and native images for your Spring Boot application. The Spring team is working on adding support for compiling Java um, Spring Boot uh, uh, applications to native executables using the CrawlVM native image compiler with a Spring Native project, which is available as a public beta. And uh, the goal is to support compilation of existing or new Spring Boot applications to native execut executables without any changes, which is not yet the case for the current betas due to the state of the project and the number of key differences between a JVM and CrawlVM native image platform we discussed in the last slide. You can get started with a Spring Native, native very easy by using start.spring.io to create a new project. Let's do that now. So as you as, uh, can see, I'm now in my browser and uh, on start.spring.io. And um, for Spring Native, both Maven and Gradle are supported. I will use Maven for now. And also regarding the languages, Java and Kotlin is supported. Important for the latest version on, of Spring uh, Native um, 0 0.10.3 is uh, that you use uh, Spring Boot 2.5.4 because uh, that's uh, the only supported version right now for it. So if you have... Um, um, an existing application um, that you want to, to uh, test uh, uh, or compile as a native image, you have to upgrade it to that version or downgrade it if you're using uh, snapshots. Um, the first thing I will do here, because we will use uh, that, that uh, um, application uh, the start, starting point um, um, for the further uh, demos, um, I will give it um, uh, yeah, a name of a Spring Boot. Good. Hello, well, native. And um, regarding the Java version, uh, the uh, Crawl VM native images um, are currently only supported uh, for Java uh, 8 and 11. 
Because of that, we are not able to use Java 16. The next thing we have to do is uh, we have to add uh, Spring Native. And uh, for my application, um, I showed you, I also have to add uh, Spring Web. And um, yeah, the Spring Actuator, it makes sense to add it to any uh, project you create. Let's now have a look at uh, the, um, the files um, the Spring Analyzer will create for, for us. And um, as you can see in the POMXML, we have uh, the Spring version uh, or Spring Boot version here. And we need for the, um, for the latest Spring Native uh, uh, um, version, we have um, the, the Spring Native version specified here, as I already mentioned, 0.10.3 is the latest version. We have the Java version 11. And uh, yeah, those uh, properties here, uh, the Spring Native version will be used um, here um, for that uh, dependency. And that's um, the only dependency you need to, in, uh, to, uh, to uh, create a native image out of your application. Um, additionally, you need uh, some plugins. And um, the first thing that is uh, deployed here by default is um, for the uh, for Spring Boot's Cloud Native Build Pack support that with that flag, um, uh, the um, uh, Java native uh, build pack will be used in, instead of the normal one because the build packs are not able to detect it. I will talk a little bit later uh, in detail about build packs and what they do. And um, there's also that spring uh, ahead of time Maven plugin, um, which uh, is is um, uh, uh, also uh, something that that's um, uh, needed for for uh, uh, the for for the the optimization um, and um, uh, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, transformations that uh, that that are needed uh, to to improve uh, the native image compatibility and footprint. And um, last but not least, uh, we have um, the second option. So the first one with the build packs for the second option to use uh, Crawl VM's uh, build tools. Um, we have that um, uh, uh, plugin here um, configured. So um, with that, you have two options. And um, as you can see here in that native profile, uh, it will be um, triggered. The plugin will be triggered um, uh, uh, with a, a package phase. Let's now download um, that um, project for later use and um, go back to our slides. As already mentioned, uh, we currently have two options to build a native image with a Spring Native. And uh, yeah, the first and easiest option is to leverage uh, Spring Boot's Cloud Native Build Pack support, which uh, was added in version 2.3 to build OCI compatible containers uh, for your Spring Boot applications. And uh, yeah, the build packs detect what is needed to compile and run uh, an application based on the application source code. And the application is then compiled, compiled by the appropriate build pack and a container image with best practices in mind is built with a runtime environment. It's also possible to, um, for example, with the Java build pack to uh, create a build pack, uh, to create a container image with a build pack of a jar archive. So it's not only that um, you, you have the option to uh, um, compile um, and, and compile the software and also create a, a, a container image or the, the runtime environment, um, you also have the option to use a jar. And um, the biggest benefits are increased security, minimize risk, and uh, increase the developer productivity of those build packs. And um, one benefit here is uh, when using this method, uh, you don't have to install Crawl VM on your machine. Um, the only thing you need is Docker uh, for the building of the container. And um, as you may uh, be saw in the um, POMXML um, uh, project we generated on start.spring.io, um, 
um, it uses by default the Paketo build pack. So if you go to start with Spring Boot IO, uh, normally um, the Paketo build packs will be used. And uh, yeah, the Paketo open source project uh, provides production ready build packs for the most popular uh, languages and frameworks. So not only uh, Java. And um, the second option uh, to build a, a native image with Spring Native is uh, to build um, or to use uh, the Gralvian native uh, build tools, um, which require uh, that uh, Gralvian is installed on your machine. And um, instead of a container, it produces a native executable for the platform you are running the build on. So that's a really important point here because um, it's a native image and a native meshing code. Um, you have to build it on the same architecture and operating system um, um, where uh, the application uh, will run on. Um, and that's really important. Let's now see how our Spring Boot sample application um, performs as a native image on uh, a serverless runtime. And for that, I'm switching uh, back here. The first thing I have to do uh, is um, and that uh, zip file I downloaded, I have to put it in, uh, extract it and put it in a directory. So uh, let's do that first here. You are not able to see that because uh, yeah, I'm doing that on the other uh, monitor. And um, Okay. Okay. And uh, now let's switch back to uh, our terminal. Here's our project and um, let's open IDE for it. So as you can see, that's uh, the project we downloaded. And, and the only thing I have to do, so we really uh, have a simple application here is uh, we, with minimal business code is uh, to go to my other application and just copy that one uh, controller, REST controller we have here. And um, hopefully then um, it should work. And um, the next uh, thing we want to do is uh, to build a, um, a container image out of that application. So. Uh, compile that application as a as a native image and build a container image, which will be done by the build packs for us. Um, and uh, yeah, because of the time um, it, it will take uh, to do that, um, we first uh, uh, do the same. So what I didn't do in the last uh, demo is show you how I built the container image uh, for, for our JDK uh, sample. And um, I will do that first. It's just uh, that we have a comparison of the build type. Uh -huh. Always uh, the same button, sorry. Okay, so let's do that first. And um, the command to uh, create a native image is um, uh, with a Maven, so uh, for crawl you have another command, but uh, yeah, it's uh, the same uh, phrase here. Um, so uh, Maven, um, Maven uh, Spring Boot Build Image. Um, here I specify uh, the tag name of the container image. You can also do that in the POM XML, um, and um, yeah, that's it. And uh, if I do that, hopefully a new container will be built and uh, with uh, the build for JDK, because uh, yeah, our business code is minimal, it should um, take uh, yeah, several seconds and um, that should be fine. So uh, if we now um, 
as you can see, 80 seconds to build uh, that um, container image. So not only the application, um, also the container image, as you can see here. And here you can see all the different um, uh, labels, uh, layers of the container Im image that will be added by the um, by uh, the build pack. So for example, um, the uh, JRE here, uh, so, so the Java VM, uh, the executable char um, layer, and uh, for sure also the application. Let's now go to a native application. So um, there, uh, the, um, the command is a little bit different. Um, what we have to do is here, we have to add that uh, uh, um, line, command line argument, uh, argument minus p native image. And um, we will start uh, the, the building of the container image now, but uh, we will return later because it will take several minutes to build it. And um, as I already mentioned, that's uh, yeah, one of the problems um, of, of uh, native images um, for the developer productivity. I already built a, a container image because of that um, before the session. And um, now we can, um, as we did it with the, um, with the, the uh, JVM uh, application, we can now create a service for that. Um, the secret um, for uh, my uh, private uh, Harbor registry is still in the cluster. So the only thing I have to do is uh, do that uh, KM service create command with my new image. So uh, uh, hello world native in this case. And um, yeah, within se uh, seconds, my application, um, okay. My application uh, is uh, is available, and um, what I can do first is okay. Let's call it one time to see that it is available. Um, it looks like it works, and here you can see that native, so that is not the JDK one. And yeah, what's the first thing that's really uh, yeah interesting for us is um, how uh, yeah fast the start of of that of that native application is. Um, so uh, let's have a look at that. Um, to do that, I uh, have to, uh, um, like I did it with the other one, I have to uh, set the scale min to one because uh, without that, I, I have that scale to zero. And um, hopefully uh, now, okay, I, I have uh, some more running, but, um, for the native one, let's wait until uh, those other are terminating. And um, yeah, but yeah, what, what I want to do first is to see the build time, sorry. And uh, yeah, for that, I only have to go into one of the containers and um, uh, see, uh, ah, here you can see it. So, uh, the start time instead of the two seconds of the JVM one, um, that uh, application uh, uh, um, that we, uh, um, or the native image for our application only takes uh, uh, 0.1 seconds uh, to uh, start the application. So that's really, really fast. So um, a, a really, really big improvement here, um, which is really great for our serverless uh, runtime for our application on the serverless runtime. The next thing I wanted to, to do is uh, to have a look at the um, resource consumption. And um, yeah, for that, uh, let's have a look at the uh, metrics here. Because I upgraded uh, the service, I think that should be two here. And we can see we only have a 43 um, megabyte, um, which is also a, a really, really uh, great improvement um, compared uh, to uh, our um, uh, other application. What we can do now is so we saw, okay, the startup time is, is, is really improved. Uh, the memory consumption is improved. And also the CPU is improved. Um, 
because of uh, yeah the, the fact that the the, the JIT compiler uh, need, needs uh, more and more CPU. Um, let's now have a, a look at the build. Hopefully, uh, it's still not ready. Um, so um, what we can do until then is uh, just have a look at um, yeah. For example, let's do a load test of our. Uh, of our um, application now, of, of the serverless application. And see um, how, how the pods perform there. Okay, sorry. As you can see, the, the containers, because of the startup time, they are um, running really, really fast. And that's really uh, yeah, a benefit of, um, of it for our service application. OK, so uh, here it's still building. Uh, just um, uh, yeah, to, to continue, because uh, it's not that much time left, Matt, um, 10 minutes. Um, I will just continue here, and we will see, we will see the results uh, later. So, one in, uh, one, another important aspect um, um, that we have here, because of uh, yeah, in the um, container image I built for the native image, um, there is no uh, Java VM, for example, and also only the source code that will be executed um, at runtime. Um, uh, the, if, if I have a look at the images that are available in my computer, I can see that um, the, the size of the container image is also really reduced. Um, so uh, here, 160 uh, uh, megabyte uh, less than uh, um, uh, for the Hello World native than for the Hello World container. And this is because, for example, um, the, um, uh, yeah, the Java VM in, in the other container uh, alone uh, has a size of 140 megabyte. Okay. So we are not able to 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 see that. I think but maybe at the end of the uh, at the end of uh, the. Uh, session here, but um, yeah, the build duration for the native images um, are really, really high compared to the one for the JVM. So uh, uh, I did that before the session and it was around 40 times slower uh, than uh, the build where, uh, for the JVM. And um, if you have an application where the compilation for uh, the JVM takes several minutes, that really is a problem for the productivity because here uh, the build is only 90 seconds for the JVM and uh, yeah, for the native application, it's four minutes. So that's really a lot if you have a build of uh, several minutes. And uh, on the other side, the application consume more than uh, three times less memory. And the startup time duration is only 5% uh, of the startup time um, uh, on the JVM. And uh, so that's really a great improvement uh, we were looking for for our serverless uh, uh, runtime. And um, there are two other uh, performance metrics on this slide that show uh, similar results. And uh, those metrics are from the latest uh, CrowdVM beta versions. But um, the Spring team is uh, working really hard to improve them further. So that's really the current state. And uh, maybe as soon as uh, uh, Spring Native is uh, GA, um, there are other numbers here on the slide, so even better. And um, here, here you can, for example, see the huge, huge, uh, huge improvements uh, the team achieved uh, in the past uh, from uh, version to version. So half a year here, and you can see how dramatically it is improved. So really, really great work by the team. And um, as I saw in the session, 
uh, today it's uh, yeah they in in the 11 version i think 011 they are also reduced reduced for example uh, the the size of the container image that will be re uh, reduced uh, dramatically so yeah a lot of great effort there As we learned, the build duration is one of the trade-offs of uh, native images, and um, yeah, which is very bad for the developer productivity. And our recommendation here is uh, to delegate the native image building to your CI CD pipeline. And for testing and running the application on your local machine, use uh, the JVM. And as I already mentioned several times, or uh, where I talk about uh, the trade-offs and benefits, of serverless and also of uh, GraalVM and native images, it doesn't make sense to um, right now to uh, yeah build every of your applications with the uh, um, as a spray uh, a native image because for example uh, of uh, the uh, throughput that is not that good uh, than on a JVM and also um, yeah you don't really need those those uh, for example startup times. Um, also, the memory usage. If you have uh, don't have uh, uh, um, yeah different load on your on 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 your application, and uh, yeah, because of that, it really makes sense to um, yeah think about where it makes sense to use uh, native images and where not. And um, Spring Native is currently available in public beta, with uh, new releases coming in the next few months, with a lot of improvements, and. Um, the goal is to have first-class support for native application de uh, deployment, as well as an um, optimized footprint of the JVM uh, with a Spring Boot uh, 3, based on the Spring Framework 6, which is planned to be a GA at the end of next year. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it and uh, how much it will be improved in the next uh, uh, month uh, uh, until the GA. As always, uh, the best way to start with a new technology is to have a look at the documentation. So uh, I know I, I'm also a developer most of the time. For the first thing you do is try it out, and then you run into problems, and then you search the internet or Stack Overflow. But uh, yeah, I think um, especially, for example, for Spring Native or Spring in general, the documentation is really great, and it makes sense uh, to, to read it. And um, yeah, that's my recommendation to do that more often. And um, also, for sure, the link to the GitHub repository of, of the project. And uh, additionally, my uh, colleague, Dan Dobrin, uh, built a really awesome uh, workshop, which is available at his GitHub account. Now, with the uh, four minutes left, we can have a look uh, whether um, or how, how uh, the building, as you can see, uh, the building of the image uh, um, works. And um, because uh, of the performance of my laptop and uh, yeah, Zoom, PowerPoint, uh, whatever, uh, in this case, it took uh, eight minutes to build the image. So um, on the slide, it took four minutes. But as you can see, um, yeah, if I wanted, for example, to uh, just um, do a short fix and try something out, uh, that's a lot of time. And uh, yeah, the only thing you can do is uh, if you focus on one thing, uh, um, yeah, go to the kitchen, get a coffee or whatever. And uh, yeah, that's not optimal, but um, I already shared with you uh, what we think, how you should do that. So uh, test and, and debug your application. If it's not a problem with the Spring Native or QualVM in general um, on uh, JVM and uh, for, the, for the production use, uh, um, uh, build an image with your CI CD pipeline. Okay, perfect. So, um, yeah, that's the end of the session. I hope you enjoyed and uh, learned something in, in it. And uh, yeah, I want to thank my awesome colleagues like Dan Dobrin and the rest of the uh, Spring uh, Tensor Subject Lead team for the enablement of and the resources they created for our solution engineering community. And um, yeah, feel free to contribute, uh, uh, to continue to ask questions in the Slack channel for the session or join the Q&A Zoom chat uh, after that session. Thank you very much. 
All right. Fantastic. Thank you so much, team. I really appreciate that. Reminder, everybody, please follow him over into the QA where you can continue the conversation. And with that, let us take a brief break. Get up, stretch your legs, fill up your water bottle or coffee choice beverage, and we'll be right back with another fantastic presentation. Cheers. <music> 